The TTC provides a critical service, carrying millions of people every single day. In this audit, we focused on whether the TTC is receiving all of the Presto revenue it should. To do this, we looked at the functionality of Presto and TTC fare equipment, the controls for the backend system, and the relationship between the TTC and Metrolinx. We found that the availability of fare equipment, meaning the amount of time that the fare equipment is working, may be less than what's been reported publicly. For Presto card readers, one of the most significant issues is that the availability rate doesn't always capture the time when readers are frozen. So even though taps don't go through, the current system may treat it as being in service. We also found that the availability rate of Presto vending machines on the new streetcars and for the TTC fare gates at the subway stations may also be less than what's been reported. Malfunctioning equipment can be frustrating for the customer and it can also result in revenue loss. In addition, we found that there is a complex relationship between the TTC, Metrolinx and its vendors. Here is an example of how a seemingly simple problem took a long time to solve. A vending machine was out of service for seven days. So any passenger who tried to pay their fare with coins or a token was unable to, especially if they couldn't reach the other machine on that vehicle. But how does a vending machine stay out of service for so long? We found that in more than half of the instances when the vending machines were out of service, their reason was because their coin box was full. This is also what happened in this particular case. When a coin box is full, both Metrolinx and the TTC have a role to play. When this occurs, the backend system generates a warning saying it's out of service. This system is run by a Metrolinx vendor, Vendor A. Coin collection is not one of Vendor A's duties. Another Metrolinx vendor, Vendor B, is responsible for coin collection. In this particular case, the TTC did not realize that the machine was out of service because its coin box was full, so they erased it as a service issue to Metrolinx. Metrolinx directed the service issue to Vendor A, who handles the machine's maintenance. Vendor A checked the backend system to see why it was out of service. They saw that there wasn't any mechanical issue, it just needed to have its coin box emptied. So they closed the service ticket because this wasn't part of their responsibilities. The TTC ended up raising the service issue to Metrolinx four times, only for Vendor A to close it each time. On the TTC's end, they're responsible to ensure that vehicles are in the garage for Vendor B to empty. But in this case, because the TTC didn't realize that the coin box was causing the out-of-service issue, they didn't ensure that that particular vehicle was brought back to the garage during the time Vendor B was emptying the coin boxes. This broken cycle lasted for seven days before it was finally fixed. And even though customers couldn't use the vending machine for each of those days, that machine was still counted as being available for customer use. This example shows that even when the TTC, Metrolinx, and its vendors are working within their defined responsibilities, there is a disconnect. That's why it's important to work together to diagnose the root causes of these kinds of issues and improve oversight to ensure that problems like this get fixed. Each party's responsibilities are interrelated. So it's important that they all share information and act as one to focus on what matters the most, the customer. The Auditor General has made 34 recommendations to help the TTC and Metrolinx resolve these issues. To learn more, visit toronto.ca audit.